Hey everybody, we're back in time at 1955, Brooklyn, New York, Ebbets Field, the scene. Game three of the 1955 World Series between the New York Yankees and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Super advanced Stratomatic, and there are the ballpark effects. You can see for singles, it is 1 to 13 for a hit, and for righties, it's only a 1. So lefties get a big advantage for singles. However, the tables turn for home runs. Lefties only get a 1 to 9 for a home run in Ebbets Field, but righties get a 1 through 18. So I have those figures noted on the score sheet. And we'll meet our starting lineups. These are exact lineups as played from game three. Starting pitchers for both teams. For the Dodgers, it'll be Johnny Padres, the lefty. And in 1955, he was 9-10 and 10 with a 3.95 ERA. And for the Yankees, it is right-hander Bob Turley. And his record, 17-13 and 13 with a 3.06 ERA. We'll meet the starting lineups first for the Yankees. And then we'll get to the Dodgers in the bottom of the first. But for the Yankees, leading off will be left fielder Bob Serve. Batting second is second baseman Gil McDougal. Check that. He's at third base. McDougal is at third base. Batting third, catching Yogi Berra. Hitting cleanup, center, center fielder Mickey Mantle. Batting fifth at first base is Bill Scourin. Batting 6th in right field, Elston Howard. Batting 7th at second base, Billy Martin. Batting 8th, the shortstop, Phil Rizzuto. And batting ninth, using pitcher hitting card number 1, is Bob Turley. So the Yankees have some right-hander batters in there to try to confront the lefty Padres. We'll get going here. Super advanced rules. The only thing I may not use is I may not use the robbing the home run or blocking the plate. I think I'll skip those two, but I'm going to try to use everything else including ballpark effects, super advanced fielding, clutch, uh, that sort of things, plus rolling the D20 to check for box and wild pitches and things like that. So here's Bob Serve to start things off here. We'll see what we can do. It is a 6-6. Six, six. So a 6-6, six, six, Johnny Padres against a righty, 6-6 six, six is a leadoff walk. So Bob Serve. Not known for his base running. On the season, he stole four bases without being caught. So, he, you know, he's got a good number here. If he does get his jump, it's a 20. But you have to roll a six, and that's not easy to do, obviously. But it's a leadoff walk, and that means we will invoke the D20 for every roll now, as long as someone's on base. Here's McDougal. And we get an eight, so that's not... Going to play a factor. 3-11 for McDougal against a lefty. That's a single, but there's a ballpark check. And remember, the ballpark for singles for right-handers, you have to roll a 1. That's the only way you get a hit. And he didn't do it, so it's a line out to short. So the ballpark, Ebbets Field, cost him there. So McDougal is out, and here's Yogi Berra catching Yogi Berra. And we get a 3-9 against the lefty. 3-9 against the left. He's a ground ball, second base C. So that will advance the runner. Serve will go to second base. So he's in scoring position with two outs. And the Mick, Mickey Mantle. Now they could put Mantle on or pitch around him, whatnot. Uh, although a tough hitter, Scourin, is next. So they're going to go ahead and pitch to Mickey. And we get a 6-12. So Mickey, a switch hitter, batting right-handed. 6-12 is a ground ball, second base X. And that's Jim Gilliam. And Jim Gilliam is a 3-29. A 3-E-29. So we get a 7 for his range check and a 10 on his error check. So we start off with the range check. He's a 3, and that's a 7. That's a G-3. And on his second base error check, he is an E-29. And we rolled a 10. So we go down here to E-29. And we do not see a 10, so that's a good play. And the inning is over. So Gilliam makes the play. Inning's over. Nothing doing for the Yankees in the top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Yankees nothing and the Dodgers coming to bat. And we'll meet the Dodgers starting lineup. Second base, Jim Gilliam will lead things off. Pee Wee Reese at short, bat second. 
Duke Snyder in center field will hit third. Cleaning up and catching is Roy Campanella. Batting fifth in right field, the Reading Rifle, Carl Ferrillo. Note the minus five arm. Batting sixth, playing first base, Gil Hodges. Batting seventh at third base, Jackie Robinson. Batting eighth in left field, Sandy Amaros. And batting ninth and pitching, Johnny Padres. He's using pitcher hitting card number three. So Bob Turley has finished his warm-up tosses. We're ready to go. Jim Gilliam, switch hitter, batting left. It's a 6-3 for Turley against the lefty. 6-3 is a strikeout. So Bob Turley off to a good start. Puts the K on Gilliam. One away for Pee Wee Reese. So Pee Wee, see what he can get going. It's a 5-7. So Turley against the righty. 5-7 is another strikeout. So Turley back-to-back Ks. Can't start any better than that. Two up, two down, but now he's got a really tough hitter in the Duke, Duke Snyder. It's a 3-7. Three, 3-7 seven. Three, seven against a righty is a walk. So it's a two-out walk to the Duke. Brings up Roy Campanella. Duke Snyder, not much of a threat to steal. Stole nine bases, but was caught seven times, so... They're going to let Roy Campanella swing away. And it's a 4-4. Four, four. Turley against a righty. 4-4 four, four is a catcher X. That is Yogi Berra. And Yogi Berra is a catcher. Yogi Berra is a 1-E-7. We get a 7 and an 11. 7 and an 11. So on the range check, he's a 1 and a 7. That's a pass ball foul out possibility and a 11 with an E7 now I'll take that back he was a 1-1 one, one. so let me rephrase that it's a W slash S and then he's an E7 with a 10 and there's no 10 there so W slash S we go to W slash S assuming I can find it here on the sheet W slash S. There we go. W slash S. And there was no uh, errors or anything like that. The pitcher, of course, a wild pitch if the runs on base. With no runs on base, the batter has a, hits a squib single. So how about that? It's a squib single. A squib single for Roy Campanella. Actually, there were was a run on base. I checked, checked that. Checked that. There was a run on base. Snyder was, was uh, on first base, so there is a run on base. The pitcher on course, a wild pitch, and all runners advance one base with play resumes with the same batter at bat. Okay, so it's a wild pitch, basically. Wild pitch for Turley. So Campanella's still at bat as Yogi Bear unable to block that wild pitch. So Campanella with a runner in scoring position, 3-8. Three, 3-8 eight. Three, eight against the righty is a ground ball to Rizzuto, and that's going to end the inning. So no harm, no foul on that wild pitch and after one complete we are scoreless Mickey Mantle made the last out so Bill Scourin will lead things off to start the top of the second against the lefty Padres 5-3 against the righty Scourin is a pitcher X and he is a 3 and an E8 so a 3 pitcher rating and an E8 a 3 and an E8 we get a 15 and a 15 and a 13 on the pitcher check. 15, he's a 3, 15. So a 3 and a 15 is a G2. And we have that 13 and he's an E8. All right, E8. And we're checking to see if there's a 13 and there is no 13, so it's a good play. So Scourin scribs it or squibs it right to Padres, who was up to the task. He makes the play one away. And now right fielder Elston Howard, the batter. And Howard, actually I didn't even need the D20 that time. 5-5 five, five for Elston Howard. And that's a walk. So Elston Howard draws a one-out walk. And that brings up the volatile Billy Martin. Stepping to the plate with Howard at first, one out. Billy Martin. And we get a six, oh, that was a six there, six four. Six four for Padres is a fly ball to center field X. That's Duke Snyder, who is a one. And he's also an E5. 
So the five should be a good play off of a one rating. So a one rating and a five is a F2, so that's a good play. The E check is for a 16, and he is an E5. It's a center fielder. E5, and there is a 16, so that's a two base error. A two base error on the Duke. So that will allow Elston Howard to go to third. And Martin is on with a two base error, E8. Two base error. And now the Dodgers are in trouble as the Yankees have something cooking here. Second and third, only one out. They're going to play the infield back. They don't want to try to. They want to try to choke off a big inning. Here's Rizzuto, and there's a one. So we got a one on our original roll here. So we consult the book because when you roll a one on the D20 or a two, then there's possibilities of some things happening. When the die is a one. When the die is a one, a wild pitch may occur. So we're going to check the wild pitch rating of Johnny Padres. Johnny Padres is a wild pitch rating of six. We're going to roll the D20. If it's a six or less, we have a wild pitch and a run will score. It's a 12, so there is no wild pitch. It was handled by Campanella. And we reboot and start again. So Rizzuto back in there, ball in the dirt, but Campanella handled it. And we got a 6-5 for Rizzuto against Padres. 6-5 is a strikeout. So Johnny Padres bearing down, trying to pick up his center fielder, Snyder. Gets the strikeout, and now we're down to the pitcher spot. And Bob Turley, who's off pitcher hitting card number one. And we get a 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight is a ground ball second base X. That's Jim Gilliam. So we'll check Jim Gilliam out and see how he's going to do. Jim Gilliam is an E3 in a range of 29. E3 with a range of 29. And that's a 17, which is probably a good play, and a, and a total of 8. So we'll check the E29 and an 8. E29, there is no 8 there in the E29. And 17 with the 3 is a G1, so that's a good play. The inning is over. So Padres pitches around that error. And we go to the bottom of the second, no score. We do have some defensive changes. And this actually happened in the game, and I'm not sure why, what caused it. But all the outfield positions change places. So Bob Serve will move from left field to center field. Yogi Berra, I'm sorry, uh, Mickey Mantle will move from center field to right field. And Elston Howard will move from right field to left field. This happened in the actual game. You go to the retro sheet and check it out. Or any uh, site that gives the play-by-play -play of the World Series from 1955, game three. And you will see that happen in the top of the, or the bottom of the second. So just want to. Do as they did, and that's we're gonna keep it going. There are no substitutions, they just changed fielding positions. Here's Carl Farillo. Farillo a 4-5 against Turley. A 4-5 against Turley is a strikeout. So Turley keeping the strikeout rain going. That's his third already. That'll bring up Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges, a 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight against Turley is another strikeout. So Bob Turley. Four strikeouts and a little bit less than two innings. He has it going on. Now here's Jackie Robinson. And that's a 6-9. Six, 6-9 nine. Six, nine for Turley is yet another strikeout. So he strikes out the side. So through two innings, he has five strikeouts. And he is just dominating early on. Completed two innings, and it's a nothing-nothing ball game. Top of the order and Bob serve, now playing center field. So he will move from a 316 to a 416 on his range rating, defensive rating. So here is serve, it's a 4-4. And a 4-4 is a ground ball to shortstop X, that's Pee Wee Reese. Pee Wee Reese is a 2-E28. A 2-E28, the 16 will be a good play now let's check his error. It's an 11. So an E28. E28 and an 11. There is no 11 there, so that's a good play. So a good play for Pee Wee Reese.
Takes care of Bob's serve, one away. And Gil McDougal, the third baseman, steps to the plate, 0 for 1. It's a 110 against a lefty. 110 is a ground ball to second, handled over there at second base by Gilliam. Two up, two down for Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, lefty on lefty. 6-6, six, six. Johnny Padres against the lefty. 6-6 six, six is a walk. So Johnny Padres, a two-out walk. And that'll bring up Mickey Mantle, who's now in right field. Even though he's not carded for it, we're going to keep the same ratings. 2-5, two, 2-5 five, two, five against the lefty. It's a single, but we have this Omega, which is the clutch factor. But there is no clutch because there's not a runner on third or in scoring position. There's only running on first. So the single will stand. And Barra will stop at second base. They're not going to test Carl Ferrillo's arm. No way. He's in scoring position. Two on, two out for Scourin. And we get a 5-6. Five, 5-6. Six. Five, six. Well, 1-9 to is a single. 10 to 20 is a ground ball to Jackie Robinson. So they ground it to Robinson. Can he field it? It's a 19. He can field it. He'll go the short way to second base to get Mantle sliding in. Technically a fielder's choice for Scourin. The inning's over. And we go to the bottom of the third. Still no score. Sandy Amaros, the left fielder, steps to the plate. And that's a 6-11 against a lefty. 6-11, ground ball first base A. So Scourin handles that one easily. Scandal, Scal, Scalrin handles that easily. One away for the pitcher. Johnny Padres using pitcher hitting card number three. But it's under Turley anyway. To 5-4 against the lefty. And a 5-4 against the lefty is another strikeout. So that's six. Count them six strikeouts in nine batters. Turley has struck out six in nine batters faced. So two outs, base is empty. Top of the order, Jim Gilliam. He's a strikeout victim. A 1-2. One, 1-2 two. One, two is a hit by pitch plus injury, but we're not doing injuries, so it's just a plunk job. As he plunks Gilliam, two out space is empty. Now he is he does have some interesting numbers on his steals, but if he tries to get a jump and he rolls a 9, 10, or 12, he's gonna be picked off. Or caught stealing, I should say. So let's see. They want, they're gonna try it. They're gonna try to see if he can get the lead. And in doing that, you also roll the D20 to check for pickoffs and so forth. All right, we got a 12. 12 means he is he is out. He is picked off. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm not sure if it's a pickoff or a caught stealing, but when you on the right side of the slash, that means you're out if you roll one of these rolls. So I'm going to pause the video, check the book, and make sure I'm accurate and be right back. Okay, the book says they're automatically out stealing. doesn't say pickoff, so we're just going to call these caught stealing. So we'll call it 2-4 as Yogi Berra throws him out. And that's going to end the third inning. So we go to the fourth, still scoreless. And Elston Howard will lead things off against Johnny Padres. Elston Howard, 2-8 against the lefty. 2-8 is a potential home run. 1-12 for a homer. 13-20 is a triple. And that's a double for Elston Howard. I'm sorry, it's a home run for Elston Howard. What am I talking about? It's a six. So that's a home run for Elston Howard. Elston Howard has gone deep. And we have our first run of the ball game as Elston Howard has led off the fourth with a solo shot. one nothing Yankees. Here's Billy Martin. It's a 2-4. And a 2-4 is a ground ball to short. Ground ball to short. Pee Wee Reese handles it. One away. And that'll bring up Phil Rizzuto. And that's a 3-8 for Rizzuto against the lefty. 3-8 is a ground ball back to the pitcher. Padres for out number two. That now will bring up the pitcher, Turley, off pitcher hitting card number one, but it's off of Padres anyway. 5-5. Five, five. And he's going to walk him. How about that? He walks the pitcher. Walks Turley. A two-out walk. Turley's certainly not going anywhere. 
Here's Bob's serve. And that's a 2-7 against the lefty. 2-7 is a ground ball to shortstop, and that's going to be Pee Wee Reese. He'll make the play, go the short way to get Turley, who barely moved, going to second, and the inning is over. But the Yankees take the lead on the Elston Howard home run, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 1-0 Yankees. And I'll bring up Pee Wee Reese. He was at bat when Gilliam was caught stealing. It's a 1-4. 1-4 is another strikeout for Turley. He is on a roll. That's his seventh strikeout. Brings up Duke Snyder. The Duke, he walked his first time up. It's a 2-10. Two 2-10 ten. Two ten for Snyder is a ground ball to second. So handled out there by Billy Martin. We're out number two. And that'll bring up Roy Campanella. It's a 4-6 against Turley. And a 4-6 is going to be a walk. So Turley, another walk. His second walk of the game. Puts Campanella on and brings up Farillo with two outs and Campanella at first. Farillo steps to the plate. He struck out his first time up. And we get a 4-7. Four, 4-7 seven. Four, seven for Turley against a righty is yet another walk. So back-to-back -back walks by Turley, and that will put runners at first and second with two outs for Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges, also a strikeout victim his first time. And we get a 3-9 for Hodges. That's another strikeout. The inning's over. So Turley with yet another strikeout. That is eight through four innings. Nothing doing for Brooklyn. We go to the fifth. It's still one nothing Yankee lead. Gil McDougal. Gil McDougal will lead off the top of the fifth. Point of weakness innings for the pa Johnny Padres, it's the sixth. And for Turley, it's the eighth. So they're both good for at least two more innings. Here's McDougal. It's a 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five is a strikeout. McDougal out on strikes. So Johnny Padres joining the strikeout parade. Gets McDougal. Here is Yogi Berra. Lefty on lefty matchup against Padres. 6-6. 6-6 six, six. Six, six is a walk. So Yogi draws his second walk. And that'll bring up the Mick, Mickey Mantle. And so far, Mickey Mantle is one for two with a single. And that's a 1-4 against a lefty. 1-4 against a lefty is a walk. So another walk. Lots of walks, it seems like. As now Padres is into the walking parade. That's his fourth, fifth, let's see, two, three, four, five. That's his sixth walk. That is his sixth walk. So he's having some control problems here. Here's Bill Scourin. And that's a 3-4 against the lefty. 3-4 against the lefty is a single, I'm, I'm sorry, 3-4 against the lefty is a fly ball to right. There are not two outs, so it won't be a base hit. It'll simply be a fly to right. There is this B question mark, so that means Yogi Berra has the option of trying to go from second to third, and if he can't make it, he'll just have to stay there. The only way he'll be out is if the D20 is a 20. So let's see his run rating. His run rating is a 12, and Ferrillo is a minus 5. So it's a 1 to 7, he'll make it. 8 to 19, he'll hold, and 20, he's out. That's a four, so he's going to make it. So on the fly out to right field, Yogi Berra does manage to sneak over to third with two outs. Runners are at the corners now for Elston Howard, who homered his last time up. And that's a 4-12 against a righty. 4-12, another potential home run. 1-13 to and a 14-20. to but the home run check is going to override that. So we're simply going to this uh, marker right here. And 1 to 18 will be a home run. So 1 to 18, a 1 to 18, and Elston Howard will go deep again. It's a 2. So Elston Howard has hit his second home run. This one's a three run shot. So all those walks come back to haunt Johnny Padres as Elston Howard. 
has gone deep. He now has all four RBIs, and the Yankees lead it four to nothing. Padres may not last too much longer because he's going to lead off the next or bat in the next inning. So bullpen activity is going for the Dodgers. 211 for Billy Martin against the lefty. 211 is a foul out to the catcher, Campanella. That's going to end the inning, but Elston Howard, so far the offensive star of the game, with that three run shot. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. It is Yankees four, Dodgers nothing. And we'll check the Dodger bullpen and see who they might be bringing in. And we also going to need a pinch hitter for Johnny Padres. So checking our bench, we're going to have George Shuba. George Shuba is going to pinch hit because Padres is scheduled to bat third in the inning. So he will be going into pinch hit. And for relief, for relief, let's see who they're going to use for relief. Looks like they're going to go with, uh, let's see, Rizzuto's going to lead off. So we're looking at the top. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go with, he's not Sears, but he's Ed Roebuck. So Ed Roebuck is going to be the new Dodger pitcher in the top of the sixth. And the pinch hitter is going to be Shuba. He will bat third in the inning. But right now, Jackie Robinson will lead off against Turley, who's been given some run support. 1-7 against a righty is another walk. So we got a lot of walks and a lot of strikeouts in this game. Here's Sandy Amaros. Now, Jackie Robinson could steal. On the year, he stole 12 and got caught three times. He has to roll a 4 or 5 to do so, so let's we're gonna give it a chance. See if he can roll a 4 or a 5. And he rolled a 5. How about that? He did roll a 5, so he did get the jump which means he starts as an 18. And now let's do some calculations. Bob Turley is a plus three, and Yogi Berra is a minus three. So they wash to a zero. So there's no effect for the pitcher and the catcher. They're both neutral at zero. So that's going to leave Jackie Robinson at the 18 figure. And then on top of that, it's going to be A minus two for him being held. So we're going to take the 18, put the catcher and the pitcher together for zero, subtract out two. That's a 16. So it's a one to 16 chance for Jackie Robinson. It's a 13. He made it. So it's a stolen base. As Jackie Robinson trying to breathe some life into this Brooklyn team. And Sandy Amaros steps to the plate with Robinson at second. It is a 1-3. One, 1-3 three. One, three is a ground ball first base A, but that will move Jackie Robinson up to third. That would have been a double play had he not stolen, so that's the importance of the stolen base. That puts him at third with one out, and now the pinch hitter, George Shuba, stepping to the plate. As Turley looks in, here's the pitch. It is a 1-8. And a 1-8 is a strikeout. So George Shuba down on strikes. Yet another strikeout for Turley. So two outs now on Jackie Robinson at third for Jim Gilliam. And we get a 2-6. Two 2-6. Six. Two six. Two six is a ground ball to short. All those hits and he found his ground ball to short. And that's going to end the inning as the scooter, Phil Rizzuto, takes care of it. So we completed five innings from... The confines of Ebbets Field and the Yankees lead four to nothing. New pitcher for the Dodgers is Ed Roebuck. He's a righty. Five and six, four, seven, one ERA and 12 saves. So he's in early to try to clamp down and give his team a chance to come back. Here's Phil Rizzuto to lead off. Righty on righty. It's a 3-5. And a 3-5 is a split chance. One to 11 will be a single. 12 to 20 is going to be a line out to Jackie Robinson. It's an 11, so he just got it by, Jackie. And that's a base hit. And now with the pitcher coming up, we're going to have a sacrifice bunt. Turley is an A bunter. Bob Turley has an A bunting rating. So we go to our sacrifice bunt chart. Super advanced sacrifice bunt chart. And a ground ball. And he's a, a rating of A, but now he'll be a B because they're looking for it. So we're going to use that column. 
Rolling the two D6s plus the white die to see who fields it. And we get a five. So a B rated and a five is a good sacrifice. The two on the white die says the pitcher. The pitcher, a robot, fields it. So it's a sacrifice hit. Call it two to four. We're out number one. Does move Rizzuto in scoring position now for Bob serve. And we get, oh, it's a one, so it's a chance for a wild pitch. And Ed Roebuck, his wild pitch rating is a seven. So we'll roll the D20 and see if he uncorks one. A one to seven, it's a wild pitch. It's a 15, so we continue. Here's serve. And we get a four, seven against a righty. Four, seven is a ground ball shortstop A. So that's going to freeze Rizzuto at short, or at second, I should say. 6-3 ground out to Pee Wee Reese for out number two. Brings up Gil McDougal. McDougal. It's a 5-5 five, five against a righty. 5-5, five, five, that's a chance for a home run. McDougal does have normal power against righties. So 1-17 to 17 is going to be a homer. 18-20 to 20 is going to be a triple. So it could be a two-run shot here. And it is Gil McDougal. Not known for his home run power, but he just hit a two-run shot. And that just makes it now a six-to-nothing game as the Yankees have blown this wide open, much to the chagrin of the Symphony and the other Brooklyn fans. Here's Yogi Berra. So three six against the righty. Three six is a walk. And there you go. Tabletop baseball, Earl Shamlin. His moniker is Majority of the time, after a home run, it's followed by a walk, and there it was. All right, here is Mickey Mantle. And there's another one, so we're going to have to roll for a wild pitch again. Roebuck, again, is a seven. And that's a three, so it is a wild pitch. So Roebuck uncork uncorks a wild pitch to move Barra up to second base. Puts him in scoring position for Mickey Mantle. And we get a six Five. This time Mickey batting left. Six fives, a ground ball to first, handled by Hodges, and that's going to end the inning. Three unassisted, but the Yankees pick up two runs on the Gil McDougal homer, two run homer, and we go to the bottom of the sixth. It is a six nothing Yankee lead. Can Brooklyn get anything going? Here is Pee Wee Reese, and we get a, a five seven against Turley, a 5-7 against a righty, is another strikeout. What do you know? Another strikeout for Turley. And for Pee Wee, that's the hat trick. Three, three up, three strikeouts. So that was the hat trick. Here's Duke Snyder. Duke Snyder, a 2-7. Two 2-7's seven. Two a ground ball to second. Handled by Billy Martin. Two away for Roy Campanella. 5-6 against Turley. A 5-6 against a righty. 1-5 is a double. 6-20 to 20 is a fly ball to Mickey Mantle. So Campanella puts one into left center. Mantle chasing after it. A 1-5. to five. And, and he will field it. I'm sorry, 1-5. to five, It'll drop in. 6-20. to 20, He'll catch it. It's a 6, so he just did get it. Mickey Mantle snow cones it in center field to end the inning. So that's the way it's going for Brooklyn in this game. Can't catch a break. We've completed six. It's six to nothing. And Bill Scourin will lead things off. He's 0 for 3, so he's missed out on the hit parade so far. 1-6. Not anymore. He just got his base hit. So he will join the hit parade. And now Elston Howard steps to the plate. He has homered his last two at-bats. Driven all, well, he's driven in four of the six runs. And that's a two, so now, now we're not looking for a wild pitch anymore. We are looking potentially, as I check the book here, just to double check myself, we're looking for a balk or a pass ball. So we're gonna roll the white die. If it's a one, two, or three, a balk may have occurred. If it's a four, five, or six, a pass ball may have occurred. It's a one, so we're checking for balks, but Roebuck has a zero balk rating, so that can't happen. So we just continue, but that's the way you check for balks. 
So we're back at it. Now it's a one. So we're gonna check for a wild pitch. Robux a seven. And that's an eight, so he's not make the wild pitch. So we're gonna try again. See if the third time's a charm. As Elson Howard trying to get in at bat here without any interruptions, and he does this time. Six seven. Six seven is whoa, he's got a chance here for something big. One to sixteen is a double. 17 to 20 is a single. Both are two stars. That's a five. So Elston Howard slugging again, this time a double. Scouring will have to stop at third. So runners are at the corners. I'm sorry, at second and third. Nobody out for Billy Martin. The infield is going to have to play in. We got a 4-7 against Martin. 4-7 is a ground ball shortstop A. And with the infield in, they will have to hold. They check the runner. <clears throat> so, as we check here, what I'm going by is this super advanced ground ball result. Infield in, ground ball A with uh, runners at second and third is a one. And one says batter out, runners hold. So that's what I was going by in case you were curious. It's in the back of the rule book on page 17. All right, so Martin is out. Couldn't advance the runners. Infield still in against Rizzuto. And we get a 4-8. Four, 4-8 eight. Four, eight against a righty. Well, this this will advance the runners. 1-15 to, to triple. 16-20 to 20 is a single. I'm sorry, is a double. So the runners are both going to score here on Rizzuto. It's a 12, so it's officially a triple. Phil Rizzuto, the scooter, scoots a triple into the gap. Two runs come in, and the Yankees are now taking an eight-nothing lead. And that might be all for Mr. Roebuck. He's getting waylaid in there, but they're going to keep him in. And the bullpen's active, but they're not ready yet. So here's Turley, the runner at third. The infield's going to have to come in. They have no choice. It's a five-seven against the righty. Five-seven, one to eight's a single. 9 to 20 is a line out to short, so Turley could help his own cause here with an 8 or less. It's a 9, so he lines it right to Pee Wee Reese. For out number 2. And now we're back to the top of the order, and Bob, you got served. So Bob served. Rizzuto's still at third. It's a 3 4 against the righty, and that is a strikeout. So Bob served out on strikes. Thanks. Strand Rizzuto at third, but the damage was already done with the Rizzuto two-run triple. We go to the seventh inning stretch. I'm going to stretch with them. It is the Yankees waylaying the Dodgers by the score of eight to nothing. All right, bottom of the seventh, and it'll be Carl Ferrillo. He's 0 for 2. I'm sorry, he's 1 for 2. Strikeout and a walk. 0 for 1, I should say. Strikeout and a walk. 5-3. 5-3 is another walk, so Turley issues a free pass. Not really what you, what you want to do when you're up 8 to nothing, but that's what happened. So that will bring up, with Ferrillo at first base, Gil Hodges. And Hodges has struck out twice. He's 0 for 2, two strikeouts. That's a 4-8. Four, 4-8 eight. Four, eight against a righty is another walk for Turley. So he had a lot of walks on his card, and he's just... Not, do, not helping himself out right now with these walks. Two on, nobody out. And now we're up to Jackie Robinson. So Jackie Robinson with a chance. Get something done for the Dodgers. It's a 111. 111 is a ground ball third base A. That's a double play. So a 5 4 3 around the horn double play. That's not going to help their cause. Two quick outs. Perillo does take third, but small consolation. And here's Sandy Amaros with two outs and the runner at third in Perillo. Amaros, a 2-11. And a 2-11 is another walk. How about that? Another walk. And now we're at the pitcher's spot, so we will get a pinch hitter for Mr. Roebuck. And it will be, the pinch hitter will be Rube Walker. Rube Walker is going to be the pinch hitter. Rube Walker will pinch hit for Roebuck. 
with the runner on third, or runner on the corners, runners on the corners, and two outs. Here's Rube Walker, lefty batter. And we get a 1-9, a 1-9 for Walker against the righty. And a 1-9 is going to do damage. 1-2 to two is a homer. 3-20 to 20 is a double. So let's see what we come up with. 1-2 to two is a homer. 3-20 to 20 is a double. That's a 6, so it's a double. And in case you weren't paying attention, that was the first hit for Brooklyn in the game. It's a double, and that will score for Rillo. Now, Amaros could score because the drive was the center, which is now patrolled by Bob Serve. And Serve's got a zero arm. He was not being held at first. He's the trail runner. He has a run rating of 16. So they're going to go ahead and just let him score because in 1 to, one to 18, he would be safe with a two-out advantage. And they want to keep Walker at second. So they're going to go ahead and allow Amaros to score and not allow the trail runner to move up. So they cut the throw. Rube Walker, a pinch hit, two-run double. And that brings up Jim Gilliam with two outs. And we get a 6-10 against the switch hitting Gilliam, batting left, 6-10. Ground ball to third. That's an X check. And that's McDougal. He's a 2-E-15. 2-E-15 and 11, probably a good play. E-15 and an 8. E-15 and an 8. Why don't I have it? He can't be an E-15. It's a shortstop. It has to be third base. Let me get myself straight here. E-15 and an 8. I don't see an 8 there. So let's double check and make sure the range check is all right. So 2 and 11. 2 and 11 is G1. So he did make the play. 5-3 ground out. But, and that does end the inning. But the Dodgers do pick up two runs. Cut the lead to 8-2 to two as we go to the 8th. And the new Dodger pitcher is a young left-hander by the name of Sandy Koufax. So Sandy Koufax is in, and he will be pitching to McDougal, Barra, and Mantle to start the eighth. McDougal, Barra, and Mantle. McDougal against the lefty, 4-7 against Koufax. 4-7 is going to be a walk, and the walk theme continues. That brings up Yogi Barra, lefty-on-lefty lefty matchup. For Yogi, that's a 112. 112 against the lefty is a hit by pitch, so he plunked him. He plunked him, and that may be payback for them hitting Jim Gilliam. I don't know, but Koufax plunked him. Warnings have been issued, and there's two on and nobody out for Mickey Mantle. Turns around and bats. Well, he's going to continue to bat right-handed, and we have a 1-9. Versus a lefty. 1-9 is a strikeout. So Mickey Mantle down on strikes from Koufax. One away. And Bill Scourin, the batter. Scourin, a 3-6. Three, 3-6 six. Three, six is a fly ball to center, and that's two away. And we're stuck now with Elston Howard. And Sandy Koufax has to figure him out. He's 3-3, three for three, a double, and two homers. And that's a 3-5 against the lefty. 3-5 against the lefty is a single, but we have the omega symbol. That is the clutch rating. Since we have a runner on second and there is two outs, that's going to turn into a line out to short, and that's going to end the inning. So he couldn't come through in the clutch that time, although an 8-2 game, I don't know how clutch you can get, but that's what the rules say. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. This will be the point of weakness inning for Turley, and Gilliam led off or made the last out last inning, so Pee Wee Reese is up. The Colonel, Pee Wee Reese, 6-5. 6-5 is a ground ball shortstop X. That's Rizzuto. So Pee Wee Reese hits it to his counterpart, Rizzuto. Have an error check, range check. Rizzuto, a 3-E36. Well, the 8 part's good. The E36 part may not be. We've got a 17. So an E36 and a 17 is an error. That's an E6. He booted it. So Phil Rizzuto... Lack of concentration there. Booted that one. Puts Reese at first base with nobody out. For the Duke. Duke Snyder. Duke Snyder. And we have a 3-8 against the righty. 3-8 is yet another walk. So how many walks can we have? I seem to 
roll a lot of walks for no matter who I'm playing with, whether it's the League of Desperation or now these two World Series teams. Here's Campanella. And we got a 6-7 against a righty. 6-7 is a ground ball, second base X. That's Billy Martin. And Billy Martin is a 2-E21. And that's a... Okay, so that was a 15 and a 15 as we are checking on a potential error in... We're checking Billy Martin. So a 15 and a 15. See if I can focus this a little bit better. 15, there is no 15 there. So the 15 on the D20 will check whether or not we have a double play, fielder's choice, whatever. Billy Martin is a 2. So a 2 and a 15 is a G1. And a G1, if we look at G1, G1 with a runner on first, it's a double play. And actually, in this case, it's first and second, so it's still a double play, 5-4 double play. So it's a 5-4 double play, which means in this case... With a 5-4 double play, third base, or second baseman, well, it can't be a 3-4 double play because it was a, to the shortstop. So that wouldn't make any sense now, would it? G1, double play, double play, 5-4. And over here, it says the ball is hit the catcher or the third base, and the result is a third base and second base double play, otherwise referred to 4-3 double play. So it's a 4-3 double play. Makes more sense. All right, so... What actually happens here is Billy Martin steps on the bag, four unassisted to get Snyder sliding in, throws to first base to double up Campanella for two outs. Pee Wee Reese will move to third, but now there's two outs and just one runner on third base. Kind of kills the rally a little bit, and that brings up Carl Farillo. Carl Farillo, a 1-5 against a righty. Ground ball to third, and that's going to end the inning as McDougal makes the play. Nothing doing for the Dodgers. We go to the ninth as the Yankees still hold a comfortable 8-2 to two lead. Sandy Koufax is going to finish out the ball game. Now the Yankees do have Bob Turley batting third this inning, so they may go ahead and go to their bullpen. We shall see. Billy Martin leads things off at 311. Against the lefty, he's going to pop to short. So a pop out to short for out number one. Brings up Phil Rizzuto, and that's a 5-8 against a right-hander. 5-8 is a fly to center, so two outs. Two outs, and we'll go ahead and get a pinch hitter for Turley. He's done enough, so they're going to take him out. And we'll get a pinch hitter for the Yankees, as well as a new pitcher. Obviously not a save situation, so that's not a problem to worry about. They're going to have... Hank Bauer. Hank Bauer is going to pinch hit for the Yankees. And then the new pitcher for the Yankees to finish up the ball game, hopefully, is going to be Jim Costanti. So Jim Costanti is going to pitch in the ninth for Turley. And Hank Bauer will pinch hit in the ninth as Turley is scheduled to bat now. With two outs and the base is empty. So we'll see what Mr. Hank Bauer can do against Sandy Koufax. Base is empty, two outs. It's a 6-9. Six, 6-9 nine. Six, nine is a strikeout. So he pinch hit and he struck out. That's the way it goes against Koufax sometimes. Three up, three down for the Yankees. We go to the bottom of the ninth. And Jim Costanti is in. He was 7-2 with a 2-3-2 ERA and 11 saves for the Yankees in 55. And for the Dodgers, Gil Hodges will lead things off, followed by Jackie Robinson and Amaros, and then a pinch hitter for Koufax if it gets that far. First, here's Hodges. It's a 5-3. So a 5-3 against the righty. He's a ground ball pitcher X. Well, he's a 3 and an E38, so... Not good for the error, decent for the range. We'll see how that plays out. It's a 338. So we get a 12, which is should be okay on his range. A 3 and a 12 for the pitcher. A 3 and a 12 for the pitcher is going to be a G3. I'm sorry, G, yeah, G3. And now as his E38 range. For the pitcher, E38, we're down here. You see all those numbers that are in there. 
The total is 13. Do we have a 13 in here? Under E38, we do. It's right here. So that is a one base error, a one base error on Castanti. So inauspicious start for him, booting the ball. Puts Gil Hodges on for Jackie Robinson. And Robinson a 1-8 against the righty. 1-8 is a ground ball shortstop A, so that's a second double play that Jackie Robinson has hit into. This one's a 6-4-3. Last time was a 5-4-3, but this one's a 6-4-3 double play. Two quick outs, and now it's up to Sandy Amaros to keep things going. It's a 2-5. Two 2-5 five. Two five is a ground ball to first, handled by Scourin. Takes it to the bag himself. And game three of the 1955 World Series is over. Yankees win it by the final score of 8-2. to two, And we'll be right back with the totals. Okay, let's look at the final score here. It is the Yankees winning over the Brooklyn Dodgers in game three to take a two games to one lead in the series. For the Yankees, eight runs, seven hits, one error. For the Brooklyn Dodgers, two runs, only the one hit and one error. Bob Turley, the winner, he did walk eight and strike out ten. So the only hit was a pinch hit double by Dixie Walker that brought in two runs. And that was the only hit they had. That was in the bottom of the seventh. There were a total of 16 walks in the game as Dodger pitching walked eight Yankees. So that's why the Yankees only had seven hits to go with their eight runs. Plus three of those hits were home runs. That had something to do with it. As well as a double and a triple so they had more extra base hits than they had singles. They only had two singles in the whole game. Everything else was extra base variety. So the Yankees with the win, Turley the winner, Padre is the loser, and the Yankees take a two games to one lead in the series by the score of eight to two. So hopefully I played these the super advanced correctly. If I made mistakes on the super advanced, please let me know. Um, if I misread a card, then you know, I can't help that. That just happens. But if I made a egregious error on the super advanced rule, please let me know. I uh, did want to give a shout out to uh, I'm drawing a blank now to Chris at uh, Moonlight Graham because I did buy the cards from him and also bought these card sleeves. They work really well. They feel really good to hold. And they slide the cards between, you know, between bats. The cards don't stick this way, and they're very easy to handle. So I really enjoy these. He sells these for seven bucks, a hundred, a pack of a hundred for seven bucks. So I've got these ready to go for the 2016 cards when I get them. At least for the teams I'm going to play. I'm going to play a replay of the Orioles. I'm going to attempt to play a season replay of the Orioles. So I definitely want to have the Orioles um, in these sleeves. I may do it for all the American League teams, but. It's, specifically the Orioles at least, because I'm going to be handling those all the time. So that's it from here. Hope everybody uh, has a, is having a wonderful Saturday. Uh, no opening day at Strat was yesterday. And Monday is when all the pre-orders will start shipping. So hopefully uh, by the end of this coming week, middle or end of this coming week, everybody will have their cards. Certainly by next weekend, everybody should have their cards that pre-ordered and be ready to do some serious stratting. So that's it from here. Final score again, Yankees 8 and Brooklyn 2. And there was no rhyme or reason about why I picked game 3 or why I picked these two teams in general. It's just I wanted to do something before the 16 set got here, and there's not enough time to get in any other kind of projects, so I just picked a one-off game from one of the sets I bought from uh, Chris. I also got... Uh, a couple other sets, he was selling them very, very cheaply, so I was able to get those. They weren't, they had writing on them, which I don't care about if there's pen marks on them because I just use them for the results. I don't care about how pretty they are, I just care they work. So that's it from here. Until next time, we'll see you down the road.